Hi, this is Dr. Dave, and in this video I want to show you how you can use Google Sheets to carry out the row operations from a simplex method problem. So what you see in front of you here is a maximization problem, and this maximization problem is the dual problem to a minimization problem. And so I've been blogging about that on the website, and so now instead of going through and solving this by hand, I'm going to have Google Sheets go ahead and do it for you. Let me show you what it's going to look like. So here is the Google Sheet we'll be working with. We have the initial matrix right here. And then I've gone ahead and located the pivot points. So this is the pivot point for the first step. And then the pivot point for the next step. And then down here I've put them in red. When I work out my ratios for the rows and columns, I've done that over here. And way off over to the side here, I put the row operations I'm using. So let me show you how this works. So here I've gone ahead and I've put in the initial matrix for the maximization problem we were looking at. I've gone ahead and labeled the columns up here. And I'm going to do a couple other things to make this a little bit easier to read. So first of all, I'm going to take the entries in the matrix. I'm going to click in A2, and I'm holding the mouse down and dragging. I'm going to select all the numbers, and I'm going to go over, and I'm going to fill these in with a very light gray to help me accentuate what the matrix is. The headings up here, I'm going to go ahead and select them. And then I'm going to go up, and I'm going to put them also in a light gray. So I'm going to work out the row operations as you saw below, but one of my problems is as I go ahead and scroll this, I'll lose my column headings here. So one of the things I can do is go to view and say freeze rows, and I'm going to say freeze row one. What this will do is it will keep row one always on the top as I go ahead and scroll through these matrices. All right, so let's go ahead and locate our pivot column. So the most negative entry is right here in the indicator row. So this was going to be our pivot column. And now I'm going to go ahead and work out the ratios for each one of the rows. Remember that is the constant divided by the entry in the pivot column. So here it would be equals the constant divided by the entry in the pivot column. And I can go ahead and put this into red. I've already got this set up so it is in red, so it's not going to be a real big deal here. And I can do the same thing for the next one. I'm going to say equals the constant divided by the entry in the pivot column. And then the same thing down here. Constant divided by the entry in the pivot column. Now remember, the pivot row is the row that has the lowest ratio, so that's right here, the 12. So that is the pivot row. It intersects with the pivot column right here. And so to help me realize that that is my pivot, I'm going to go ahead and put that text in red. Now normally in the next step, what I would have to do is to put a 1 at the pivot entry, but it's already a 1. So the only thing I need to do is put zeros above and below. So to put a zero in the first row of the matrix, I'm going to need to take negative 1 times row 3, the pivot entry, and add that to row 1. And I'm going to place that entry in row 1. Now, to put a zero in the second, enter, second row there, I need to do pretty much the same thing, but using row two to add to. So I'm going to say negative one, row three, added to row two, and I'm going to put that into row two. Now, for the indicator row, to put a zero where I see the negative 6,000, I'm going to take 6,000 times row 3. I'm going to add that to row 4 and put the entry, the result, into row 4. So 
I've got my recipe of what needs to be done. Now I need to go ahead and carry them out. Now, in doing this, the only row that's not going to change is row three. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to row three. I'm going to select and drag. And I'm going to say copy. And then I'm going to go down to my new row three, which will be right here. And I'm going to go edit and I'm going to do a paste special and I'm going to do the values only. Whenever I copy and paste in here, I always want to do paste values. So the entries that I see here are the exact same ones that I had above. All right, so now let's go ahead and put the zero in the first row of the matrix. So I start by typing in equals negative one times. Now the entry in row three is right there. And I'm going to add to that what was in row one and it gives me zero as it should. Now I'm going to go ahead and select that same entry again, grab the fill bar, and I'm going to have it apply that same operation to every one of these columns. So all those row operations you were doing, doing earlier by hand, I just did them all right there. Now let's do the same thing down here. So equals negative one times the pivot plus the entry in row two. It's zero as it should be. Now I'll go back into there and then drag the fill to do the rest of the row operations. Now for the last row, it's going to be equals 6,000 times the pivot added to row four. And so there's my zeros and ones just as I'm supposed to have. And now let me fill the rest of that row. So there we go. We've done one iteration of the simplex method. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these and tell it to fill it with that light gray. And now I need to start another simplex iteration because I still have negative numbers down here in the indicator row. So my pivot column is where the most negative indicator is. That's the negative 18,000. And now I need to figure out where my ratio is smallest. So I know it's not going to be here because we never put the pivot where you see a negative number there. It's going to either be in row one or row two. So to figure it out, I'm going to say equals the entry in the constant divided by the entry in the pivot column. And now I'll say equals that entry divided by that entry. And you can see the most, the smallest entry here is the 0.4. So that tells me that the second row is the pivot row and the second column is the pivot column. So the five there, that's my pivot. And now I need to go through and put ones and zeros in the rest of this column. So I always start out and put a one for the pivot. I didn't have to do that in the first step because it was already a one. But in this case, what I'm going to have to do is take one fifth of row two. So one slash five row two, and I'm going to put the result in row two. In doing this row one, three, and four are not going to change. So let me go ahead and put them into the new matrix. I'll select. copy. It's going to go right there and remember always to paste special values only. Same thing with the last two and I can actually select them all at the same time because they're right next to each other. Copy and then I'll go down here and say paste special values only. All I need to do now is that one fifth of row two. So I'm going to go to the first entry and say equals one slash five times row two from the previous matrix. One fifth of zero is still zero. And now I'm going to go ahead and stretch it over. So there's the one that I expected to see there. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is 
I don't have decimals here. And that's because I've set this up to be able to format some of my decimals as fractions. And let me show you how to do that. Because if you were to do the same step, you'd probably have a decimal there. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go up to A, then I would drag select here, and then go to this format button, and go to where I see more formats and custom number format. What we want is this format that you see right up here. So what you'll need to type here is going to be the number sign, space, and I'm actually going to write it as three question marks here, divided by three question marks, and then a comma, and then a negative sign, the number sign, space, and then three question marks, divided by three question marks. In doing this, I'll be able to write fractions that have up to three numbers in the top and the bottom, and then a number out in front. So these are going to be mixed numbers, and it'll show them as either positive or negative. Say apply, and now whenever you do the algebra down here and you get decimals, it's going to go ahead and write them as fractions. So here you see a one-fifth and a negative one-fifth. All right, well, we need to do another step here because remember, here was our pivot. I'm going to put it in red, but I still need to do the zeros above and below. So what are the steps I'm going to need to go through? Well, I need to take negative 3 times row 2. And I need to add that to row 1 and put the result in row 1. We're not going to change row 2 at all. Let's see, for row 3, I'm going to have to take 3 times the pivot and add it to row 3. So 3 times the pivot, which was in row 2, added to row 3, and put the result into row 3. And then for the very bottom, I'm going to have to take 18,000 times the pivot and add it to row 4. 18,000, row 2, added to row 4, put the result in row 4. What's not going to change here is row 2, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select that, say copy, and then go down to the new row 2, which is going to be right here, and remember to edit, paste special, values only. Oh, I forgot to highlight this. Let's go ahead and highlight this right now and put it in gray. Normally I do that as soon as I'm done with the step. All right, so let's do the first row. Equals negative 3 times the entry in the pivot row plus row 1. Now I'll go ahead, stretch that over. Notice there are those nice fractions right there. And the fractions that are bigger than 1 are going to come out as mixed fractions. Now, to get the one down here, I need to say equals 3 times the pivot row and add that to row 3. And then stretch that one over. So here's my zeros and ones, just like I wanted. Now let's do the indicator row. That's going to be equals 18,000 times the, in the pivot row added to row 4. And now we stretch that over. And now there's that matrix. Once I'm done, I'll select it and I'll put it into a gray fill. Now, am I done? Well, there's still a negative number down there in that pivot, or in that indicator row, so we need to go through another cycle here. I'm going to go over to my completed sheet here, and if I scroll down on it, you can see this is where we are at in the previous one, 
And if I keep going through the process, I eventually get to a point where I get another column with ones and zeros. And then because the, the answer to the maximization problem would be over here, the answer to the minimization problem is down here below. So the solution 1500, 2700, and 1800 is the solution to the dual minimization problem. And for this particular example, that was my goal. So take advantage of using your computer to do this, and that way you're able to document the steps really nicely, and you can check any work you might have done by hand.